Hello, everyone. OK, so let's get started here talking about uh, SI units and measurement. Now, we're going to use metric units all the time in science. And you'll find this in chemistry, biology, physics, and later classes that you take if you're a science major. Now, we have basic um, metric systems here, units here. For the length, uh, we measure things in terms of the meter. And for mass, we use uh, the kilogram is the, is the SI unit for mass. For volume, uh, we use a metric system called the liter, capital L. For time, everybody knows that. Uh, it's actually the second. Okay. And for temperature, we use something called uh, kelvins, or capital K. So let me talk about each of these in turn. So uh, take a look here at uh, the meter. So uh, the meter is the metric unit for length, and it's given symbol m, small m, OK? And in 1793, uh, they were doing a lot of astronomy and measuring you know, how large the Earth is and things like that. And they decided to define the meter as 1 10 millionth the distance between the North Pole and the equator. So um, that was what they used for quite a while. Now, in 1983, uh, the definition was updated, and that's what we use now. Uh, the distance that light travels in a very fraction of a second, OK? And uh, that's going to be a meter, OK? So a meter is about, uh, if you hold your hand up to your nose, that's about the length from tip of your nose to the tip of your fingertips, OK? So that's about a meter. Now, this right here is uh, one of the standard meter uh, pieces of metal that they have in the National Institute of Standards. And one of the problems with a piece of metal is that its uh, dimensions change as temperature increases or decreases because of the coefficient of expansion. And there's the formula if you're interested in that. OK, so the, the length changes ever so slightly. So that's why in 1983 they redefined the distance of a meter based on uh, the speed of light. Mass in the metric system, in the in the metric system is given the kilogram, okay, and the abbreviation is kg. Now in 1799, uh, this was made of platinum, and then 100 years later, they made a platinum 10% uh, iridium uh, alloy. And there's a little uh, cylinder there that you can see, a nice shiny little object, okay. And that was the standard kilogram. So there was an object in Paris. A few of them were made, and replicas were made and sent to different countries. And this mass, this object had a mass of exactly one kilogram. Um, the mass can change over time. Maybe the replicas had an error associated with them, right? So what they did in 2019 was redefine the kilogram based on something called the Planck's constant. Uh, we won't see this for quite a while in the class, and don't worry about it right now, OK? Um, in case you're wondering, the mass of about a liter of water is about a kilogram, OK? So if you have a liter bottle water around your house, just lift that up. Yeah, that's about a kilogram, OK? And that weighs about you know, a little bit more than two pounds. Now, th there's a difference between mass and weight, OK? Right now, I weigh a certain amount. And if I go uh, to the International Space Station and I float around space, I will be weightless. But trust me, I won't have lost weight, right? So weight is more like an apparent reading of your uh, weight based on the gravity, OK? So a penny, for example, has a certain mass. And if we weigh it here on the planet Earth, it's going to read 2.5 grams, OK? Now, if I go to the moon, because the moon has one-sixth gr the gravity of Earth, it's going to be one-sixth that amount. OK, so maybe hundreds of years from now and so on, we'll actually have school children taking chemistry class on the moon. And when they put a penny on the balance, we want that penny to read 2.5 grams, which is a mass. So the s electronic scale that we use, we'll have to multiply whatever that reading is by six to make sure that it reads the correct value on the scale, OK? So basically, mass is a quantity, weight is an apparent amount of uh, force that's exerted by gravity, OK? So that's the difference. We measure things in terms of mass. How would you measure the mass of a helium balloon? Helium is a, is a material. It occupies, uh, remember, matter is anything that has uh, mass and occupies volume. 
helium has mass. But when we try to weigh it, it, it floats off the balance up to the ceiling, right? So how would you weigh a helium balloon? It does have mass because there's a material in there. So how would you weigh a helium balloon? I'm interested to know what you think. All right, now let's talk about volume. Volume is used a lot in chemistry. And uh, we have something called the liter, and it's abbreviated capital L. This is one of the few uh, metric units that have a capital letter, okay? So it's capital L. Now, way back in 1901, we defined uh, the kilogram based on the properties of water. At four degrees Celsius and ordinary atmospheric pressure, one liter, okay, of uh, pure water actually turned out to weigh uh, one kilogram, okay? So we based it off the mass of water and the quantities of water. Now, it can depend a little bit based on the purity uh, and some other factors. So uh, what they decided to redo the definition in 1964 is just say, uh, let's just call it one, uh, a box or a cube that's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, the volume of uh, whatever a gas or liquid inside of that cube is going to be defined as uh, a liter. So that's a liter, okay? Uh, we don't have square containers. We kind of have round things in the lab, but uh, we'll get more into that later on. All right. Now, temperature. Now, in um, different countries, there might be different units, okay? So in the English system, British system, for example, we use Fahrenheit a lot, and we use capital F for that, okay? Now in the sciences, we use Celsius and Kelvin. Celsius is given a, a degree symbol and then a capital C. So degrees C is Celsius, all right? Way back in 1743, they defined the Celsius scale based on the properties of, once again, water. So they all agreed that water will freeze at zero degrees Celsius and water will boil at 100 degrees Celsius. And then they just put a bunch of markings in between and they said, all right, that's your scale. Okay, in 1948, that was modified ever so slightly to define the triple point of water to be 237.16 Kelvin, which is 0 0.01 degrees Celsius. So it's just a different property. You probably won't learn this until your second chemistry class, okay? But that was the reference point, and again, it's using the property of water, okay? But now you might ask, well, what is Kelvin? What is the SI unit for Kelvin, okay? Before I jump to that, let's look at some pictures here on this slide. We have uh, ice water, and you can see that temperature is reading zero, so that's the freezing point of water. And then also I was, uh, let's see, I think I was steaming some broccoli on that day, and this lid that was covering the pot had that little hole in it to let steam out, and I put a digital thermometer in there, and I wanted to check if my thermometer read 100 degrees Celsius. And this thermometer is reading 99.0 degrees Celsius. So it's pretty close, but it's a little bit off, okay? Now, we're gonna see that there's a relationship between the Celsius scale and the Kelvin scale on the next slide. But if you wanna pause the video and write some things down here, or after you watch the video again, this figure here makes a lot of sense. Now, I've never in my whole life seen a uh, thermometer that measures directly in Kelvin. If we do need it, we just do the math. The formula is here on the bottom of the slide, okay? Now, the abbreviation is capital K. There is no degree symbol in the Kelvin's or the Kelvin temperature scale, so watch out for that, okay? Now, the Kelvin temperature scale came back, came about in 1848, a very long time ago when, um, uh, well, it shows up in uh, thermodynamics, the kinetic molecular theory of gases, gas laws, and things like that. So they had a need to invent this uh, Kelvin scale, okay? Now, the idea is that there's an absolute zero. Absolute zero is defined as zero Kelvin, and it's the lowest achievable temperature. I've already mentioned in one of my other videos that this is when all molecular motion stops. So things get so cold that even vibrating solids don't vibrate anymore, okay? Now, in 2019, the Kelvin uh, temperature scale was redefined just by changing a constant. It's called the Boltzmann's constant. <laughs> Again, I won't get into that. But if you ever want to calculate the Kelvin temperature, you just uh, do the uh, adjustment. We'll do that uh, here today with a uh, thermometer later on, okay? 
Here's a picture of a refrigerator. We use this, we, I don't personally use this, but I mean, different research corporations use these special refrigerators to uh, cool down. They are quantum computers that need to be at ultra low temperatures. This is the Fermilab uh, dilution refrigerator, it's called, and it was able to cool down to 0 0.0053 Kelvin, and that was recorded on uh, January of 2020, okay? So I just wanted to show you what maybe like an ultra low temperature cooler refrigerator looks like. Time, we've already mentioned, is the second. It's abbreviated small s. And in 1956, it was defined as, um, you know, a fraction of a year based on the Earth going around um, the sun, right? But in 2019, it was actually redefined. <laughs> you can see how there's been vast redefinitions of our metric units here in 2019. Um, it's now based on the cesium atomic clock. The cesium atomic clock is a very big uh, piece of apparatus. You can see there in the figure, two scientists with uh, laser goggles on looking at this, these shiny uh, stainless steel uh, tubes and things. Um, and and they're, they're, they're very big, very enormous. Now in 2014, they actually, I think it was 2014, they came up with a uh, chip scale atomic clock uh, developed by NIST and that has drastically improved the uh, the timekeeping of GPS satellites that need to know the exact times to uh, pinpoint your location on Earth. Okay, so uh, that's, that's a chip uh, scale atomic clock. So these can be quite small. I suspect in the next 30, 40 years, we're all gonna have these just in our, in our phones. Okay, smartphones. All right, let's talk about the common metric links. You've got the meter, which is small m, all right? You've got centimeter, which is abbreviated CM. A centimeter is um, a tenth, a, hun uh, a one hundredth of a meter, okay? A millimeter is mm, that's one thousandth of a meter. A nanometer is nm, and that's one billionth of a meter. We'll uh, use nanometers when we study wavelengths of light. A kilometer, a very large quantity, is actually 10 to the third meters or 1,000 meters. We'll talk about metric prefixes later, but I just wanted to throw them all out there, okay? Now, these are measured with a centimeter ruler or a meter stick. Um, let me lean over here and grab some of those. So if you buy one of these rulers from uh, the dollar store or something like that, you'll see two uh, units on there. I'm not sure if you can see it very well in the shiny light here, but on the top you have inches that go from zero to 12, I mean one to 12, those are inches. And then on the other side, uh, you have a centimeter and millimeter. So I'll put my finger in front of it. Maybe you can see the units there. Uh, I don't think so. So each one of these large numbers is a centimeter, okay? It goes uh, one through uh, 30 here. So each of those is a centimeter. And then each one of these small little markings on the ruler are uh, a millimeter. This is not showing up well on the camera at all because that ruler is very shiny. Now this is a meter stick. That's right, we don't call it a yardstick because uh, a yardstick is a yard. Uh, this is a meter stick, okay? And once again, you have lots of uh, markings on this ruler. Um, each one of these numbers represents a centimeter, okay? So a centimeter is about the thickness of my finger here. And a meter stick, like I said, is about the distance from the tip of your nose to the tip of your fingertips if you stretch out as much as you can, okay? I'm a tall person, so uh, I'm a little bit long there, okay? So that's about a meter. Let's talk about volumes. Now, as I mentioned, we have uh, the liter, which is capital L, but we also have milliliters. One milliliter is uh, one thousandth of a, of a liter. I'm sorry, that should be a capital L there on the slide. Uh, we're all familiar with a two liter soda or maybe a one liter, uh, you know, water bottle, okay? And we measure volume in the lab here with uh, graduated cylinders. So this is a, uh, a graduated cylinder. It's already gotten its chemistry degree and graduated. Okay, bad joke. So uh, you place this on a level surface and you fill this up with water and um, there's little uh, lines here on the side that allow you to read 
how many milliliters are in this. If I fill this up to the top where my finger is, this can hold 50 milliliters. Okay. If you wanted to measure out uh, a gross amount of liquid, just estimated it, you would use a beaker or a flask. Uh, here's a beaker in my hand, and I don't know if you can see this on the camera, right in between my fingers, it says right there, approximate volume. Okay, approximate volume means this is not accurate glassware. Uh, this is designed to hold, you know, 400 milliliters. Okay, and so you can fill it up, and there's some little lines on the side that can guide you. So if you needed to put in 100 milliliters of water in here to boil some water, you wouldn't measure it super accurately because if you measured 110 or 90, it's still water that's going to boil, right? So these are just approximate markings. Mass. Okay, we've mentioned the kilogram before. A kilogram weighs about two pounds, and that's a tremendously large quantity. If you wanted to measure out a small amount of powder, for example, you would probably measure it in terms of grams, okay? So a kilogram is uh, equal to 1,000 grams, okay? Kilo means 1,000. And this is measured with a balance. I don't have one here in the lab, or an electronic scale. So I'm holding here an electronic scale, um, it's kind of like uh, your bathroom scale at home. You press the zero button, you place something on there, and it gives you a nice digital readout how heavy it is, okay? If you put a penny on this scale, it's going to read 2.50 grams. That's about the mass of a penny. Now for temperature, we have uh, a couple of different temperatures, like I said, but listen, we don't have a Kelvin temperature like thermometer in the lab, okay? The thermometers we have in the lab measure in uh, degrees Celsius. Let me show you what they look like. This one's an alcohol thermometer. That little red color in there is a red dye that's added into the alcohol. And you just have all of these different lines here. There's a white backing on the back so that you can see the red line as it goes up the uh, thermometer. Okay. Right now, this one's reading about 21 0 0.0 degrees Celsius, okay? We also have digital thermometers. Let me uh, turn this one on. I hope the battery's good. Um, yes, okay. And this is reading, um, can everybody see that? Whoops, I'm holding on to the probe. Okay, so that's the temperature reading of the room right now, okay? And if we want to get the uh, Kelvin temperature, all we have to do is add 273.15 to that value, okay? So what is the Kelvin temperature of the room right now, okay? What is the Kelvin temperature of the room right now? Well, as you can see from the video, you have the reading in Celsius right there in that, on that digital uh, temperature display. And then all you have to do is plug it into this formula and add 273.15 to that on a calculator and you get your result. So that's the temperature of the room I'm standing in right now in degrees, I'm sorry, in Kelvin. We don't say degrees. All right, so that's a very brief overview of uh, the types of metric units you're going to encounter in chemistry and some of the measuring devices we use. We're gonna get more into uh, units, metrics, the metric system with prefixes, and uncertainties and significant figures in the next video. Thanks for watching. Please like and thumbs up my video and have a great day everybody.